When we look at the electron geometry for PF3, we need to take into account all of the things bonded to that central phosphorus, all the electron domains. So we have one, two, three phosphorus atoms. Then we have this lone pair. So we have one, two, three, four things. That's our steric number. So we end up with a tetrahedral electron geometry for pH3. This is different than the molecular geometry. Let's look at that in three dimensions. So the purple, that'll be the phosphorus in the center of our atom. Let's add three fluorines. One, two, three. You see they spread out. Right now we have this trigonal planar. Everything's in one plane. That's the molecular geometry and the electron geometry. We add that lone pair though. Watch how it forces the fluorine atoms down. So it pushes them down and now we have a tetrahedral electron geometry. We see these four electron domains here. They're all spread out. Electron geometry is tetrahedral. When we look at molecular geometry, the lone pair is there, but we kind of hide it. And now we end up with what's called a trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry. So the lone pair is still there pushing down, but we don't really consider that when we look at the name here for the molecular geometry. Let's put the lone pair back and let's go back to our Lewis structure. So to recap, we have one, two, three atoms and a lone pair, four things. Steric number is four, tetrahedral electron geometry for PF3. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.